we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed this is a gift from god and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it we are studying that we the church is a multi-community multi-racial community multi-cultural community multi-national community multi-generational family we, re we regard no one from the worldly point of view we have all clothes Christ. Even denominational difference should be seen as strategy, not divisive. The church is a people not limited by geographical locations. We need now to focus rather on the purpose of the church than what device us. Because in Christ, we have been made one. So we want to be discussing the purpose of the church. We'll begin from today discussing the purpose of the church. Now, the Apostle Paul in chapter 3 of the book of Ephesians discusses the purpose of the church. But he touched and described the union of the Gentiles and the Jews as a mystery. And he says, the mystery of Christ. Now, what did he mean by, or what does he mean by the mystery of Christ? Ephesians chapter 3. Let's take it from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. I Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you Gentiles. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. It says, I have written briefly to you. Now, the next verse says this. Now, in reading this, in reading what I have written to you, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. Yeah. The mystery of Christ. Christo, mu e hintasem. Now the mystery that was wrapped in the coming of Christ. E hintasem wa na wadi e siye Christo e mayenu mu. Verse five says that which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the spirit of God's holy by by the spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets now i want to at was obi mu no wan ma nipa ma enhunu se de wa yi no adie nansan yi a kire na somafo ne adifo kronkron a wo wo hunhumu no brothers and sisters adofono First, Paul explains mystery as a truth which in other ages, that is in the Old Testament times, 
was not made known to the people. In the Old Testament. Then second, he's saying that mystery is the truth that has now been revealed by the Holy Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. The apostles and prophets here are New Testament prophets. He is saying that the revealer of the mystery is God. And he did that through the agency of the Holy Spirit. Colossians 1 verse 20 says, states flatly that the mystery was hidden from ages and generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. Okay, Colossi form made kind a tibaco, Colossi form mano, a tibaco, you move at your or say, and tell some more a free via sebre, ne, I want to at a swan, or hunta, I know, a fee where you know, the actual, now what if for? Now, so what is the mystery? What is the mystery that has been revealed by, the, by God through his spirit to the saints? Verse 6. Verse 6. I want it to be projected and then we read verses together. The mystery no, not this one. This is Colossians 1, 26. I'm looking for Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6. Okay. The mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and share us together in the promise in Christ Jesus. And he tells them to say, Say, a man of my own so, now my son, Pano so, ya yonko adidi for, ni ni pedu ya krono ara, ni bo sheno hon fa fa fo bi, Christo Yesu mu. So he is saying that God has revealed a mystery to him, which was hidden in the in times of old. And now he, God has revealed it through the Holy Spirit to his apostles and prophets. And in verse 6, he actually talks about the mystery. So, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body and share us together in the promise in Christ Jesus. This is the central truth of the mystery of Christ. That through the gospel, both Gentiles and Jews have become one in Christ. But this is only made possible through the gospel of Christ. No other means will bring you into the church except through the gospel of Christ. This spells the importance of the gospel of salvation. Why it must be aggressively preached in every generation. Now it is indeed the power of God unto salvation. The seed that gives birth to the church. The gospel. You see, no church will grow if it is not evangelistic. 
See, I believe in discipleship. But if you don't go and bring the soul, who will disciple the soul? But the Jesus says, we should go. Let us go. And when we bring them, let us ground them. The Church of Pentecost have been founded on evangelism. And we need to hold on to that in every generation. We need to go out, and when we go out, signs and wonders will follow the church. Nobody comes into the church. Through, but through the gospel. Through the gospel. So verse 7, 8, he then explains what it means to be the administrator of this mystery. Now verse 7. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. And no one why you some four said you and Yanko Pon Duma Chedia, what they are terminal, Nini Tumi, a Dumayano, etcetera. I'm praying that all of us will be servants of the gospel. Bompire Sien Yanabe, a Sempano, a some four, that the gospel will cause us to go out. Na a Sempano, a Bamia, and we should go out and serve our community with the power of the gospel. Na ye qua, young Conco, sum ye mine, young Funya, me to me, no enquire. Now let's go then to verse 10. We talks about the purpose of the church. Ephesians 3.10 is a foundational test for the possessing the nation's agenda. Now, so the is saying the mystery is the church, the bringing together of the Gentiles and the Jews through the gospel. Now, verse 10. The NIV says that his intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. So I don't know whether when I come across Ephesians 3 10, I read or I recite. I don't know. I get confused. <laughs> but his intent Jesus' intent for establishing his church. Now, when we say intent, we mean the determined end for establishing the church. His intent is that the church should be established. the church his determined end for bringing the two together was that the church becomes not a terminal of God's blessing, but a channel of God's blessings. Praise God. That is a good translation. That the church does not become a terminal of God's blessings, but a channel of the blessings of God to, the, to humanity. That the church will be a teacher of God's manifold wisdom to principalities and powers. Now, Paul here uses principalities and powers to differentiate the church's tax from that of Israel. Now, 
So he is saying that that the church will show principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. And I'm saying that bringing principalities and powers is to bring a difference between the text of the New Testament church and that of Israel. Otherwise, Matthew stated it plainly and simple. Plain, simple. And then Paul makes it a bit complex. Just for us to know the difference between the church and Israel. Matthew 28. What has come to be known as the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That is Jesus. Now, what does he need authority in heaven and, and on earth for? <laughs> he says they have, they are, it has been given to me for him to do what with it. I thought he is God. What does God need authority in heaven and on earth for? Who is he going to show that to? Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go to verse 20 and we take 21. As well. He exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. And seated him at the right hand in heavenly realms. So he seated Christ at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Now, so let's pay attention to the next verse 21. Far above all rule and authority. All rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Now, verse 22. Shall we read together? And God placed all things under. His, that is Jesus' feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. So all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I've been lifted over principalities and powers. I thought he is God. He did all these things, and he says that I gained it for the church. So in fact, the church, we should change our mind. Now, even principalities and powers, we have been lifted far above them. How much more witches and wizards? Or how much less 
riches and wizards. It's true. Verse 19. Let's go to Matthew 28 19 now. So, with the power that he has given us, he now instructs the church to go. So, he says, Therefore, go and make disciples of how many nations? All nations. Now, so hold that. Matthew is saying that make disciples of all nations. And in Ephesians 3 verse 10, Paul is saying that his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Now, instead of saying nations, he said rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. These are spirits that govern nations. So Paul could have said that his intent was that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the nations. And this man for Paul could be to me, I can say, I feel the team upon the say, or be my we are singing now, now, man, I'm ringing now, and who the young son be brain. So Matthew says, Go into the nations. Matthew say, Munko, we are safe and ringing But Paul is saying that as you go into the nations, you will be confronted with. Principalities and powers. And the Paul, smart for Paul, children say, "Bra mo ko amana me ni mo sani amati o akano mo be siya impenindiye ani tumidiye." The spiritual forces that govern nations, you face hudua. them. To me, I hold a di amai sono mo ni wong be siya. And God through the church will teach His multi-faceted or manifold wisdom to these principalities and powers. See, the expression, his intent is that now through the church clearly shows that the church is a new creation. With a distinct calling and a distinct destiny occupying a unique place now in the purpose of God. Let me take that again. The expression. His intent is that now through the church clearly shows that the church is a new creation. Something that never existed. With a distinct calling. A unique destiny. Occupying a distinct place in the purpose of God. The church, therefore, is a strategy of the Lord in, in drawing the world to himself. Strategy of the Lord. So it's, it is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. The church is a strategy of the Lord in drawing the world to himself. Let's take the team test for this year. First Peter 2 verse 9. So, but you are a chosen people. You plural, the church a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, very special. That, so, it's just not a special possession, it has a purpose. That you may declare the praises of him 
who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Na mudie moye abusua wa yi won ahini asofukuo oman kronkron oman wa fa won aye onwara ne dia se monka dia ofrem mo efri esu mu ba ne ha enwan won ne mu no ni menye enkyere. Number 2. E to sum you know. God the church is God's hope in this new dispensation. I sorry no anasafo no e yo nyankopon ani da so e wa unto atwaso yi. Colossians 1 26. The mystery that has been kept hidden from ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the lost people. I want to atwa so so hunta ye no na efei wa yi no edi a kire na hunte fo na verse 27 if you are a pensa person you can read if you are not a pensa person you can decide to keep quiet to to them god has chosen to make known among the gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery it's a particular mystery which is Christ in you the hope of the manifestation of the glory of God. And you know, so no so and yanko pon pese or ma won hunu and hunta semi ye and you nyam a hunya a mame mu and ni Christoa or wo mumuno the new nyam and it as one. So God hopes in the church in this disposition. And to o nyanko pong the nidaswa and what in ne muno. Hoping that through the church the kingdom of the world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. I pray that God will give us more of the Daniels. So, so that through them, the, the, the Nebuchadnezzar will know that the kingdom of their world is the kingdom of our God. God is hoping that through the church, every believer will be presented fully mature in Christ. God is hoping that through the church, his will will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. And because of this tax. For which God hopes in the church. The apostle Paul says. I strenuously contend. With all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. I work hard. So that God is not disappointed in the church. Anytime that you see the church appearing weak, it doesn't mean that the church is weak in and of in and of itself. It is just the generation of people at the time who are weak. So Paul says that I don't want God to be disappointed in me. So he says, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Brothers and sisters, let us work hard. Let us prove to the whole world that Jesus is Lord. And may the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of our God. You see the Greek word ecclesia translated church in English. According to Alan Scott, it's a borrowed term. Alan Scott, Frick frequently describes a community that is called out of ordinary life. Gathered together for the purpose of 
influencing society. And giving authority to bring about change in society. So before Jesus was born, the word ecclesia existed. And then Alan is saying that he borrowed it, he used it, and we have translated this as church, assembly, congregation, gathering, to mean that it is a gathered community for a purpose of influencing the society and giving authority to bring about change in society. And Alan H. Lemuse, Takasano, or Femier, Eddie Betremuse, a year in Pequo, our Frown Asafua, one one one, Amma won to me, Sanabaya will bet to me in Satra, Abba Bia. Now, Ecclesia is not just a call like camp. So yeah, can you la focus on Ecclesia Sebia Safono? And yes, what free will be said, Omra no one one one. But a people sermon. Nemo nipa washa da atonsa afrewon. By an authority for for a specified purpose. Now hey, which one to me be an afrewon, but tires no kubinti. So we have been called together. And the wabwayang are not afraying. And we have been called for a purpose. Now wabwayang are not afraying, but I been called for a purpose. But I been. The intention of Jesus summoning the church was to have a people capable of bringing change to any and every community. Brothers and sisters, are we together? You see, we have been saying, using the word check, 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 and now, when you say check, it doesn't even make any meaning. But I want us to have a deeper understanding of church. See, the church is a people belonging to God the Father who brings joy to their community. They bring joy to their community. So Christ in you should be hope for your community. Now a church in the community should be hope for the people. You see, when Philip got to Samaria and the Bible said that he started ministering and demons were cast out, people were healed, scripture says that there was great joy. In the city. But when the Christian usage of the word church often suggests something static and inactive. A passive congregation. Sitting those in the abuse. But both the Old Testament and the New Testament background give it a different flavor. New Testament background give it a different flavor. Now, so who shares any of the Bobretti? I will ponder down any full flow more in Chiremuno and Tisakra. Even Israel, the church in the wilderness and of the Old Covenant was very dynamic. And powerful. Israel, na oya sorry no ewo esre ne so ewo pamda de ni mumpo no na e ya safwa two million holding e ye juma wum. They were a people on the move. Oye ni pa bribi e mono wa nam no ko wenge ni. Migrating together to a glorious destination to possess Canaan. Na wa dadi e wa di e ni na ano wa di e wura wa kwentu mo a wa nam e ko akofa Canaan asa. Now they were a mighty force to reckon with. Na oye two million holding a two million to me and sorry ti awo. Turn with me to. Joshua 5 verse 1. Joshua 5 verse 1. Now when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings, I'm talking about all kings, Amorite kings, all Canaanite kings, along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over. 
their hearts melted in fear and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. Mm. That was how powerful Israel was. Israel. May the church rise in power. Sorry, no, sorry, mu. May the church rise in power. Sorry, no, and sorry, e mu. Chapter 6, verse 1. Yeah, munsia, iti edi kain on soa. Joshua 6, 1. Joshua, home and one. Now, shall we read together? Kain if we have a projection. Now, the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out. And no one came in full stop. Now, Yeriko dear, na wa tumu, na wa bram, and no Israel for no enim, obi freddy, na obi emem. Brothers, the early church was also powerful. Nkwa semi se, asafwe di kaya non so, na wa wa mwa di ye pa. As chapter 17, verse 6. Yen fe asuma fo nu nyumano, eti dun sun e yimu ensiyan. As 17 says, but when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here. Now, when you want to watch Yasin, you are no more be a call, ma, chrono and penny for now, what Bobo must say, Yen no ma, what Danny Yasin, Abba, and so. What were they doing? What trouble were they causing? Number one, they were converting cultures. They were converting cultures. You see, we don't have to just be going out demonstration and causing trouble on the land before we, we people will think that we are we are causing trouble. No. But they were converting cultures. They were renewing mindsets. They were touching institutions. All the institutions, those people who were making images and selling miniature uh, goals of Artemis Diana, if you like, the, that institution was dissolved. They were influencing society. They were changing lives. And, and turning many to Christ. This was the trouble they were causing. This was the trouble they were causing. In the same manner. Every generation should see the New Testament church as the pilgrim people of God. The church is a movement. It's a movement. Matthew 10 verse 5 Matthew 7 8 these 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Sam Samaritans. Now verse 6. Shall we read? First word is what? G O is what? Go. Go is to make a forward movement. Rather to the lost sheep of Israel. This was when Jesus 
was apprenticizing the disciples. Verse 7. As you go, so the church is a movement. As you go, as you go, as you advance, the gates of Hades will not be able to withstand your onslaught. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. He heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. The church is a people on the move. Hastening to the end of the earth to beseech or to be reconciled to God. Now, Paul puts it this way. Paul say, Anna Okano. Titus 2, 3 and 14. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, while we wait until he comes, verse 4 says that who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own. And these people are eager to do what is good. Indeed, Christ died for the church. Not only to redeem us from all wickedness, but also to purify us for himself and present us to the world as a people who are eager to do what is good. Brothers and sisters, the purpose of the church is in twofold. So from next week, we'll continue discussing the, pep the dual purpose of the church. So we know that the church has a purpose. And we are saying that the purpose of the church is dual. From next week, we shall start discussing the dual purpose of the church. But until then, Christ is a purpose. The children of Christ, show up yourself. Show up. The church is powerful. Come out, come out. Come out. Come out. Declare Christ. And exhibit him wherever you are. The church is a powerful entity. We are God's hope of glory. Let us not disappoint him. No, not in any general. Shall we arise?